Hi everyone welcome back I'm sorry for the wait but hope you do know that you could read the story in the link in description right. I, just want to make sure that everyone knows that so support the creator of this fanfiction Christopher Zazel. High School PXD, a high school DXD fanfiction by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 9, The Story of the Rosy Cheeks. Scene Phoenix Mansion, Underworld. Issei found himself sitting on a very comfy and old-fashioned couch. He was still a bit damp from the bathtub however his maroon bathrobe was very comfortable. What he found uncomfortable was the fact that Lady Phoenix was sitting next to him, so close in fact that their shoulders were touching. Meanwhile, Riser Phoenix, who was also wearing a maroon bath towel, was prostrated on one knee while Ravel Phoenix stood next to her, arms folded while smirking maliciously. So, you went as far as damaging the house, not to mention causing bodily harm to our precious servants overtly or inadvertently, it doesn't matter. Either way, Ravel did the right thing and came to me with regards to Issei's itinerary. Meanwhile, my oldest and clumsiest daughter takes it upon herself to rudely do whatever it takes in order to get her way. Lady Phoenix, who was wearing a very short gold-colored skirt along with a very tight and matching corset, crossed her legs while purposely making it a point that her legs were now touching Issei's retreating ones. Issei did his best to ignore the massive pair of Lady Phoenix boobs that threatened to jump out of their very tight corset. Lady Phoenix then turned her attention onto Issei as her face was only about 2 centimeters from his. Showing a very serious expression, Lady Phoenix spoke softly. Tell me, Issei Hyodo, do your parents allow such behavior within your home? The very attractive blonde woman batted her blue eyes cutely. Riser scowled her face while pursing her lips. Don't stir the pot, Hyodo. Ravel showed a very fake innocent expression as she clasped her hands together as if she were some kind of saint. Issei, do the right thing. Tell mom, erm, mother about how your parents surely wouldn't allow such things to happen at their house. Tell mom that Riser should be punished. Ravel now had a maniacal grin once again. Issei, after looking back at Riser and Ravel, now turned his attention back onto Lady Phoenix. Um, well, to be honest, I haven't done anything like that in my house before, so I don't know how my parents would react. Issei hoped he got out of this one unscathed. Lady Phoenix blinked once and then raised an eyebrow. Really now, so you've never been bad for your parents? Not ever. Issei felt a bit frightened by what this woman was implying. Well, I meant to say, ma'am, I haven't had a similar situation like your daughter's. Like, um, I haven't destroyed my house before and I don't have a peerage, so I really can't relate. Lady Phoenix tilts her head while showing a slight smile, but it wasn't a kind smile. So you have misbehaved before. I see, I see. Very well, tell me, how did your parents correct you? Issei thought about it and then apprehensively replied. They would throw away my poor, video games. Issei choked and then attempted to recover as his forehead was sweating bullets. Meanwhile, Lady Phoenix did not change her expression, rather she allowed her blue eyes to burrow into Issei's as if they were giant drills. Poor something, you were going to say, Lady Phoenix was cut off when Riser spoke up, rapidly. Poor homeless guy combat, it's a video game. Riser was showing a very worrisome and very fake smile. She almost had a look of desperation in her deep blue eyes. Ravel tilted her head as she mouthed what her older sister had just said. Poor homeless guy combat, Issei also tilted his head questioningly, that was until he saw Riser nod at him rapidly. Looking back into Lady Phoenix's very scrupulous eyes, the teen nodded rapidly while smiling. Your daughter is right, um, we both play it. Yeah, I really like the crackhead dude. That throws up on you. Issei smiled very nervously. The lady of the house raised an eyebrow and looked back at Riser who, like Issei, was still rapidly nodding. Really now, so Issei's parents allegedly throw away his favorite, video game, which happens to be poor homeless so in such combat. Interesting. Lady Phoenix turned her attention back onto Issei. To be honest, my dear, it almost sounded as if you were going to say something lewd, that was until you mentioned the video game part. Hum, what sounds like the word, poor? Lady Phoenix moved her legs even closer toward Issei's as her stare seemed to intensify. Riser began to nervously grind her teeth as Ravel continued to go over the story involving the alleged video game. Issei wants to run away but he knows this demon of a woman has him pinned. Lady Phoenix stays quiet and continues to stare. Finally, 
Unable to take it anymore, Issei cracks. Okay. Mom and dad would take my naughty mags and toss them in the trash. The teen held his head down in shame. I see. Well then. Lady Phoenix softly raises Issei's chin with her index finger as the two make eye contact again. Thank you for telling me the truth. You're a good boy. The woman then showed a very warm smile. Issei let out a deep breath as she slowly showed a smile of his own. Um, thank you. The blonde woman turned her attention back onto both of her daughters as a stern expression took over her face. Riser Phoenix, Ravel Phoenix, you will both report to the dungeons in five minutes. Understood. Riser's usually squinted eyes widened in actual fear. Wait, mother, please. Ravel took a moment and then cleared her throat. Ahem, mother, I believe you are mistaken. Why should I, the good girl, need to go down there? Lady Phoenix raised another eyebrow. To be punished of course. After all, you had your peerage members get physical with risers. Therefore, I must accuse you of putting your precious servants in needless harm's way. I won't hear any excuses. Ravel's jaw dropped. Lady Phoenix then clapped her hands. You may leave. Both of the Phoenix princesses rushed out of the room in great haste. Issei attempted to stand up, however the lady placed both of her hands onto the boy's shoulders. Oh no, I'm not letting you out of my sight. The woman now showed a very terrifying grin which made Issei shrivel in horror. Scene, the Phoenix dungeon, five minutes later. Issei was walking alongside Lady Phoenix, who was now wearing a very revealing S&M dominatrix latex outfit in the color of gold. He couldn't help himself but get in a few peeks as she changed into this, clothing, right in front of him. The teen hoped to all that would listen, that she didn't catch him doing it. Though she did insist on him not leaving the room, the teen just didn't want to take any chances with a mother who would send her own daughters to a dungeon. A large and metallic door creaked open which led into a dark and damp bricked room. There were pairs of rusty shackles attached to large cobblestones, not to mention the random skeletons that littered the place. Aside from Riser and Ravel, who were both standing in this ominous room with looks of shame, both Yubeluna and Shuelan were also present. Interestingly enough, the peerage girls were wearing their own versions of very provocative S&M wear. Yubeluna was wearing a purple latex colored one while Shuelan was wearing one in the color of dark blue. There was a large throne near the end of the room, which had the most light. Black and metallic in color, the chair had violet embroidered silk on both the backrest and the seat. Lady Phoenix walked toward this throne and sat down while crossing her legs as Issei stood next to her with a confused and embarrassed expression. Very well, assume the position. Lady Phoenix snapped her fingers. Both Riser and Ravel bent over while showing expressions of their own embarrassment. Meanwhile, Yubeluna and Shuelan showed indifferent expressions as each raised a hand into the air. Yubeluna was standing behind Riser while Shuelan was standing behind Little Ravel. Instantly, latex-clad peerage members produced multiple rings of orange-colored energy into their palms as their fingers extended. As this was happening, Lady Phoenix turned her attention into Issei while smirking. I see you are still wearing that bathrobe. How appropriate. The woman now began to pat her own lap as she uncrossed her legs. Lean over, please. Issei took a step back with a sudden look of paranoia. Wait, are you going to? Lady Phoenix nodded politely while maintaining her smirk. Of course. I mean, you are a guest within my home and it may be true that you are technically not a part of my family, yet, still, I must insist on manners. Issei threw his hands into the air while attempting not to run away from this crazy scene. But why? What did I do? You lied to me, darling. Don't worry, I promise, you will feel so much better once you are forgiven. Now, Spitspot, come here and take what's coming to you. Lady Phoenix patted her lap once again. Instantly, both Riser and Ravel started to scream in pain. Damn it, Hyodo, just, A-G-H-H, do what mother says. Riser was grinding her teeth as she was only able to speak in between these magically enhanced spankings. Ravel squealed. Don't make mommy angry, eek. Issei looked back at Lady Phoenix, who was still patting her lap as her smirk turned into a grin. Um, alright, but I mean, are you sure you want me to lay, erm, there. Issei was slowly walking closer to the grinning lady of the house. Nodding, Lady Phoenix patted her lap once again. 
Proceeding to do what he was told as Riser and Ravel continued their moans of pain, Issei bent over Lady Phoenix's lap while trying to cry out loud from the sheer embarrassment of it all. Good, comfortable, Issei. Lady Phoenix used one hand to slowly lift the end of Issei's robe, exposing his bare behind. Issei shook his head no. To be honest, ma'am, I'm not. Well, that's just too bad. You're going to be staying like this for a bit. The lady raises her other hand into the air as Issei cringes and closes his eyes tight. Tap. A very soft hand all but lightly touched one of Issei's butt cheeks. Right afterwards, the lady pulled down his robe over his behind. And let that be a lesson to you. Now, stay put and reflect on your behavior. Lady Phoenix was now reaching under the teen's towel and softly rubbing his upper back with her freshly manicured and very long fingernails. Issei, who didn't know what to do at this point, felt an addictive tingle toward his back as the lady's hands trailed over his scars very softly. Um, shish. The lady continued what she was doing. Issei couldn't help but feel at ease, even though both Riser and Ravel were getting ruthlessly spanked by their peerage. Scene outside the grounds of Phoenix Manor. Oh, so Tan, don't you worry at all, Big Sis is gonna get your baby boy back. Seraphal, who was wearing a very flashy version of her usual magical girl attire, marched proudly along the path that led toward the large and golden gates of the manor. She looked to be in high spirits as her attention was toward the violet sky of the underworld. Milky Chan will save the day. Milky Chan is on her way. Don't you worry, Issei, my sweet. If those Phoenixes so much as hurt you, they're all gonna be dead meat. Seraphal continued to talk to herself as she used her magical girl scepter to pound on the gates. Clank clank clank. Hey, bird brains, open up. Seraphal shouted as she smiled brightly. Hi, school PXD. What if Issei joined the Phoenix family? A High School DxD Fanfiction by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 10. Final Introductions. Scene, Phoenix Mansion. Ravel was weeping softly as she sat on a large ice pack while in a comfy chair. Shwalin had a sympathetic frown as she patted the disheveled blonde girl on her head. Riser was standing next to her sister while holding an equally large ice pack to her behind. The tall and blonde woman's expression was one of slight annoyance. Issei found himself seated in between another set of twin girls. These ones had cat ears that were orange and striped along with white fur on the insides. One of the twins had red eyes with blue hair while the other had red hair and blue eyes. Issei thought, just like every other devil female, they were drop-dead gorgeous. You know, now that I think about it, are there any ugly devil chicks? Issei continued to look toward his right and then his left, noticing the different traits of each Nako girl. Sona, all of her peerage, even Rias, they're all hot. Seriously, maybe this whole devil thing ain't so bad. I'm Ni. Hello, Mr. Isei-kun. This tiger-striped-eared girl had sky-blue hair at shoulder length along with a pair of crimson-colored eyes. She was smiling very warmly. I'm Lee. It's a pleasure, Mr. Hyodo-kun. Issei turned his head to meet the soft blue eyes of this redhead Nako, who kept her very long hair tied into a single braid. Oh, um, hello Ni and Lee. Issei was blushing. Yeah, this devil thing ain't too bad at all. Damn, well they don't have the biggest bazoon gas in the bunch, but they do have amazing and really fit bodies. And, they're twins. Issei's nose began to bleed as his perverted smile crept back. Both cat girls were reciprocating Issei's obvious interest by giggling cutely. Ravel, who was now readjusting her ice pack below her butt, now noticed the exchange in between her two pawns and Issei. Crinkling her little nose, Ravel pointed toward the three. Oi, you three, I see what's going on. No indecent behavior. The little Phoenix air jumped off of her chair and ran up toward the couch where the three were sitting. Come on, girls, keep your paws off of him. Both Ni and Lee looked across Issei and at one another. They then each showed a slight disappointed frown while nodding shortly after. Meanwhile, Issei had his attention back on Ravel, who almost looked like she was about to cry again. Um, Ravel Chan. Issei was rubbing the back of his head once again. Ravel caught hold of herself and cleared her throat while showing a formal smile. Ahem, erm, yes, Issei Hyodo. So how many pieces do you have? I know your older sister has like, erm, six. So what about you? Issei was both curious and also wanted to change the subject. Ravel brightened up and began to present a proud demeanor. That is a fantastic question. Naturally, 
you'd want to know more about me and my lineage. I wouldn't expect anything less of my own personal guardian dragon. Issei was trying not to cringe and simply smiled and nodded. I have eight pieces. That's right, your Ravel Chan has eight pieces. Ravel was getting a bit carried away as a small blush formed on her snow white cheeks. Riser lifted an eyebrow as she adjusted her own ice pack. You're Ravel. Really now? Since when? Ravel scowled back at her older sister. Quiet. You. Our butts would not be hurting right now, if it wasn't for you. Pissed. Issei. Hey you. Issei turned his attention to the love seat which had two women sitting in it. My name is Sharia, nice to meet ya. The first woman had long and silver hair along with amber-colored eyes. She wore a silver tiara which sported a dark red stone in the center. Leaving little to the imagination, this woman wore very little. A dark color top with a loincloth bottom, the very tanned and well-developed flesh of this lady was out and on display. She then tightened her pink sash around her body and winked. Like what you see. Before he could respond, the second woman spoke up. Sup, I'm Mira, take care of me, Hyodo-kun. The strange-haired woman with blue also winked. She had light brown eyes and wore a red and white colored ninja style outfit. Issei thought it looked more cosplay than practical as the costume showed a great deal of this woman's flawless legs. Oh, sure, I'll take care of you both, Issei had heart shapes in his eyes once again while his smiling mouth began to drool. Ravel was still scowling toward Riser, only for the older sister to instantly show a grin. Riser then pointed behind Ravel while snickering. Ravel tilted her head and then slowly turned around. Stomping her foot down, Ravel pointed at Issei once again. Stop that, indecent, indecent. The little blonde then turned her pointed finger toward Mira and Sharia. Keep it in your pants. The large doors of this room flew up making a loud creaking sound. Walking in quickly was Lady Phoenix along with a very familiar looking person. The lady herself was wearing a golden and formal dress. Gold jewelry adorned the woman's neck, arms and ears. Showing a very unpleasant expression, Lady Phoenix quietly looked toward her right and at this other person who accompanied her. Issei's jaw dropped but not because Lady Phoenix looked beyond beautiful, no, rather he was staring at the woman standing right next to her. Long black hair that was tied in twin tails and those brilliant blue eyes, this was none other than Milky Chan from Issei's favorite anime series, Milky Spiral. There was no doubt about it. Sure, her costume looked a bit different from canon, but her face and that body, oh yes, this was indeed Milky, that's what Issei was thinking at this very minute. Issei stood from the couch immediately and did his best not to freak out in front of this television star. The assumed Milky Chan ignored everyone in the room aside from the standing Issei. At first she had a very serious expression but that changed the moment her eyes met Issei's. Smiling brightly, the twin-haired actress darted from a surprised-looking Lady Phoenix and toward a now-confused-looking Issei. Issei Hyodo-kun, I've found you. Finding it very hard to breathe suddenly, Issei found himself being hugged very tightly by the seemingly smaller Milky Chan. Yay, I saved the day once again. Nothing can stop the power of magical girl love. The woman was now jumping up and down while her grip intensified. Hey, let go of him. Riser threw her ice pack on the ground and cracked her knuckles. Yeah, release my dragon coon. Ravel stomped her foot down once again. Lady Phoenix yawned in boredom. Issei, who started to turn a shade off purple, was oddly smiling brightly. Is this for real? Milky Chan, are you really real? Brightening up even more after Issei's confirmation that he is indeed a fan, Seraphal released the teen and looked back into his warm brown eyes. Hello Issei and yes, I'm real. Also, hee hee, surprise, I'm your Sona's big sister. Issei's smile remained, however his eyes turned completely blank. S, Sona, sister, shut the front door. Milky Chan from, Milky Spiral, is the sister of Sauna Shatori, Erm, Citri. Rolling her eyes once again, Lady Phoenix interrupts. Her real name is Seraphal Leviathan and believe it or not, she has somehow been granted the title of Mao. Though I have to admit, Seraphal, your choices of attire continue to slope downward into the endless spiral of vile and tackiness. Magical girl, PFFT, preposterous. Issei found the lady of the house's words very insulting. He loved all that was milky. Spiral and especially the skimpy and very cute costumes. Seraphal completely ignored what was said and instead, took hold of Issei's hands. Come on now, I'm gonna get you back to sis. 
Seraphal tugged lightly, I don't think so. That's not how this works. You are in my home, Seraphal Leviathan. Lady Phoenix stood in front of the exit to the room. Standing in front of Issei, Seraphal showed a confident smirk. Oh, and what are you going to do? Call the authorities, what will you tell them? Oh, my daughter's illegally kidnapped another high-class devil's pawn and now her scary big sis broke into my home and attempted to get him back. Come on now, Phoenix Chan, you don't gotta act all tough and smirking, Lady Phoenix's body is completely engulfed in orange flames. Authorities, ha, huh? don't take me so lightly, Seraphal. Issei, get away from that woman and come here at once. Seraphal returns a smirk of her own while continuing to stand in front of now somewhat terrified Issei Hyodo. You really wanna do this? Alright, I suppose it's time I finally put you in your place. You couldn't take me down back in high school and you most certainly won't now. The lady of the house now flexes as her flames increase in heat and size. Riser looks over at Ravel as the two both have shocked and mildly frightened expressions. Then, a silent moment of understanding between the sisters occurred as they both nodded at one another. Mother, Seraphal Leviathan, I, Riser Phoenix, challenged the house of Cedri to a raiding game for the pawn, Issei Hyodo. Riser was standing proud with her chest pushed out as she sported a proud grin. Seraphal and Lady Phoenix both looked back at Riser silently. Slowly, the lady's flames began to die down and interestingly enough, her attire remained undamaged. Seraphal took a moment to think about what was said and then her smirk turned into a slight grin. So, Riser, you want to face off against my little sister, for Issei. Is that correct? Seraphal's grin remained, nodding. Riser folded her arms. Riser promises that she will take it easy on your sibling. Seraphal's grin increased. I wouldn't, if I were you. Issei raises his hand as if he were at school. Ravel points at Issei while showing a serious expression. Everyone, I don't think he knows what a rating game is. Isn't that right, Issei? Putting his hand down, Issei nervously nodded. Taking a deep breath, Lady Phoenix changed her expression into a more formal one. Issei Hyodo, you have a great deal to learn. It's true, you are only a newborn devil, so your ignorance must be taken into consideration, therefore I will not poke fun, for now. The lady then smiles and winks while clearing her throat. Ahem, the rating game, yes. Well, to make a very and overly complicated story much shorter, it's basically a battle in between two peerages of devils. In this situation, the match will involve my lovely daughter, Riser in her peerage versus Sona Citri in her peerage. Issei replied while still feeling confused. That sort of sounds dangerous. Is that how devils handle disputes in the underworld? These raiding games, are they some kind of erm? Issei thinks deeply and it comes to him. They are like trials of grievances. Lady Phoenix, Riser, Ravel and Seraphal all drop their jaws slightly at Issei's random use of larger words. The little blonde Ravel chuckled a bit shortly after. Hee <laughs> hee, yes, Issei-kun, raiding games can be like trials of grievances as you put it. But, they can also be for building one's own status within the ranks of the underworld. In fact, there are some peerages who fight simply because they enjoy it. Ravel has her index finger in the air as she happily explains a bit of devil society to Issei. Riser fights because Riser always wins. Now, with her hands on her hips, Riser turns her attention to Seraphal. So, how about it? Do you accept my proposal? Seraphal looks toward Issei while showing a slight frown and then back at Riser as the twin-haired girl's expression changes into one of pride. I can speak for my sister and yes, she accepts. Riser giggles. Hee hee, good, good. You've got one week. After all, Riser has wonderful sportsmanship. Seraphal nods and turns her attention onto Issei. Well, kiddo, you just sit tight for now. The magical girl scowls toward Lady Phoenix. I am sure the well known and prestigious Phoenix family will treat you with the utmost respect until the match. Reading her sarcastic tone, Lady Phoenix shrugs her shoulders while showing an erotic grin. Don't be upset if the boy doesn't want to leave by that time. I mean, who can blame him? Look around. Foo 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 foo. The lady was laughing loudly. Seraphal's left eye twitched. Well, don't be surprised if Issei here can't wait to get out of this birdcage. I mean, he is one of my greatest fans, aren't you? Seraphal was now looking back at Issei with heart shapes in her cute and very blue eyes. 
Issei nodded without hesitation. Ah, yes, this may be true, however my mansion is full of nothing but devil women. Also, might I point out that our golden boy here has had a few attempts made on his chastity within only a few hours of being within my walls. Lady Phoenix now winked at Issei again. Dare I say, this whole, kidnapping, thing might turn out to be some kind of fate for the young lad. Issei heard it, he is the only male in this entire mansion. That means not only the family members but the servants too. Issei imagined a fantasy involving a bubble bath with several bare-breasted devil maids. A perverted grin began to take hold of the teen's expression. Lady Phoenix could see this and she began to grin maliciously. High School PXD A High School DXD Fanfiction by Christopher Zazel Chapter 11 A Phoenix, a Dragon, a Nun Scene Phoenix Mansion Are they treating you well? Are they feeding you? Are you under duress and can't tell me? Just blink twice and I'll know. Issei was rubbing the back of his hair while smiling in a nervous fashion. Meanwhile, a floating communication circle with a blue hologram of Sona had her arms over her hips. Issei shook his head back at the hologram. No, really, it's alright. They haven't hurt me or nothing. Issei took a glance around this empty, large and luxurious bedroom. But to be honest, the team looks closely at Sona's hologram. I'm sorry, President. Sona takes her hands off of her hips. What for? It's not like you asked to be kidnapped by Riser Phoenix of all people. I don't like the idea of you fighting because of my dumb ass. Issei's expression shows a hint of defeat as he frowns. Sona thinks about what her pawn said for a moment and then grins slightly. Issei, can you do me a favor? Issei nods. I want you to pay attention to the rating game next week. I mean, I really want you to observe how your peerage handles things. Can you do that for me? Sona's grin turns into a warm smile. Issei nods and shows a half smile. You got it, President. I will pay attention. Sona gives the teen a thumbs up. Good to hear. Meanwhile, as far as your classes are concerned, Issei loses his smile. Your absence is nothing to be concerned about and I have taken it upon myself to collect all of your missing assignments. I have also spoken to all of your teachers and they each agreed to provide me with notes from all of their lectures. So when you get back, well, let's just say that you will be spending all of your free time, with me, catching up on all of this lost time. Sona's grin returned. Issei looks worried now. Um, all of my free time. A grinning Sona nods. Slowly, Issei jumped suddenly when a loud pounding was heard coming from his bedroom door. Sona's hologram also flinched at the loud knocking. Um, Prez, I better go. Issei stared nervously back at the communication circle as the pounding grew louder and louder. Sona nodded. You can reach out to me at any time, especially if things get out of hand. Issei, if they so much as touch you, call me and I'll get Sarah Tan, Erm, Sarah fall out there at once. Issei nodded once again as the telecommunication circle vanished. Right after, Issei hopped off of his large bed and went toward the pounding door. Showing an annoyed look as the pounding wasn't stopping, Issei pounded back on his side of the door. Pound pound pound, I thought you guys were supposed to be polite and shit. Issei then turned the ornate handle and opened the door. Issei had to look down a bit only to see a watery-eyed Ravel. Um, Ravel Chan, I'm so sorry, I was just, waha, so, waha, excited to see you in, I just wanted to, waha, see you in, Ravel was doing her best not to cry however the sudden jerks in her voice was a dead giveaway. Feeling like a jerk for acting out like he did, Issei got down on one knee while beginning to pat the distraught blonde on her head. Ravel Chan, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you like that. To be honest, I thought it was your older sister or one of the others. Ravel cheered up immediately at Issei's words and comfort. So you do like me more than Riser. I knew it. Issei nervously laughed. Hee hee. Um, keep it down, maybe. Issei looked over Ravel's shoulder to see if anyone else was in the long hallway. To his comfort, Ravel looked to be alone. Say, Ravel, I thought your mom said we had to, oh how did she put it, retire for the evening, I guess that means bedtime. Issei stopped his patting on the blonde Phoenix devil's head. Now gaining a blush, Ravel humbly replied. Well, I thought that maybe I could sleep with you. I've been wanting to meet you for such a long time. So, maybe. Ravel now made a slight bow as she showed the most nervous of expressions. Issei thought about this as he stood up. 
He noticed that she was wearing a sky blue nighty while she had matching ribbons in her blonde drills. Well, erm, the teen wasn't sure this was a great idea. Please, oh please, he said. I promise that I'll be good. Ravel looked desperate and almost ready to cry again. Taking a deep breath, Issei stood away from the entrance in defeat. Ravel's blue eyes brightened up as she made a mad dash for the bed. Rolling his eyes, Issei did the best he could not to think about any repercussions. Alright, you win. Getting back into the large bed, Issei looked over toward the side of him, only to see Ravel, laying on her side while staring gleefully at him. Issei starred back while not being quite sure as to what to do. You know, I've never seen anyone sucker punch my big sis before. That was pretty funny, but then again, you are the Sekiryute, so I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Ravel had golden stars in her eyes once again. Yeah well, she was kinda asking for it. Also, in my defense, I had no idea she was a she. I just thought he was some self-entitled shrimp who needed a thorough sticking. Issei nodded to himself. Oh, well, don't you worry about her, she's just riser being riser. But, you never said anything about how I look now. You know, since the fire, I was just a child then. Well, what do you think? I think I take after my mother a bit better than sis. Ravel cutely winks back at the now side-lying Issei, doing his best to keep his eyes focused back on Ravel's face rather than her short round and curvaceous body, Issei smiled nervously. I think you are very pretty, Ravel Chan. The Phoenix princess gained a large blush across her nose. Oh, um, well, yes. Of course I am, ha 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 ha. Ravel was now giggling in an almost maniacal fashion. Well, yeah, ha ha. Issei pretended to laugh along for a moment but then a thought came to mind. Say, Ravel, can I ask you a serious question? Ravel stops laughing and looks back toward Issei seriously. You can ask me anything, Issei Hyodo. Issei nods. My mom and dad. Well, since I'm going to be here, well, they are going to be worried. Maybe I should have asked Sona too. Ravel takes hold of one of Issei's hands and interrupts. Don't think twice about it. Tell you what, how about I take you to see them? Issei brightens up and softly squeezes Ravel's hand, which causes her blush to intensify. You can do that, wow, that's amazing. Issei was now the one with stars in his eyes. Ravel nods proudly, yup, don't give it a second thought. As long as mother doesn't catch us, we should be fine. But you gotta stick close to me the entire time and we can't be gone long. Issei nods while shaking Ravel's hand that was still in his. That would be so amazing, Ravel, I owe you for this. Ravel replays Issei's last words in her head on repeat. Ravel, I owe you, Ravel, I owe you, Ravel, I owe you, a grin takes the place of the Phoenix princess's smile. Not a problem, Issei, not a problem at all. All I want from you is your happiness and, Ravel uses her free hand to point downward toward the bed. And I get to sleep with you whenever I want, no questions asked. Issei lifts an eyebrow. Ravel realized she was grinning and quickly changed her attributes into a cute smile. Come on, it's a fair deal. Thinking that this little girl was truly acting like your stereotypical devil, Issei thought hard. I mean, I could always just call Sona and have her take care of my worrying parents, but then again, Ravel's smile grew cuter as her eyes seemed to get larger. Screw it. She is killing me with her cute lasers and my shields are out. Okay. Deal. Issei gave in. Ravel's grin returned without her permission. Oh, I am so glad that you can see the fantastic value in this little verbal contract of ours. Before Issei could react, Ravel closed in and quickly kissed the teen on the lips. Kisu. Pulling back, Ravel winks as she touches her own lips. Okay then. Well, did you want to go now? Issei who is also touching his own lips blushes intensely. Um, uh, what? Oh, my parents, ye, yeah. We can go now. Scene 3 blocks from the Hyodo home, Kuo. A fiery and orange circle made a quick and sudden pulse which was almost blinding. Now, in the alleyway in between a set of homes was both Ravel Phoenix and Issei Hyodo. Ravel immediately tugged on her blue nighty while making a, burr, sound. Maybe we should have put on some clothes before doing this. Ravel looked up toward Issei with a nervous smile. Issei places a hand on the blonde girl's head. I am just amazed that you can literally transport us like this. 
I've always been a sucker for magic tricks and this is pretty awesome. Ravel smiles brightly. Well then, shall we get going? Issei nods as the two begin to walk down the sidewalk and toward Issei's home. Taking a deep breath, Issei enjoys the brisk evening air. I've always liked evening walks. I guess it's the whole, people are sleeping and everything is quiet kinda thing. Ravel nods. Liminal spaces. Issei turns his attention back onto Ravel. What do you mean? Ravel looks back up at Issei while showing a slight smile. Liminal spaces are commonly places of transition pertaining to the concept of liminality or of nostalgic appeal. It's something that's been on the internet for a while now. Anyway, from what I've read, people who enjoy places that are usually populated by other people, well, sometimes they find comfort when those same places are empty of people. Just like tonight for example. Ravel points forward. The almost endless pattern of these street lights, the sidewalks, the streets, all of these are usually populated by people, but not in the late evening like tonight. It's as you said, people are sleeping and everything is quiet. Ravel then nods to herself. Issei's jaw is completely agape. Holy crap, Ravel, that is deep. Ravel shrugs. Nah, it's just something I read about. Issei shakes his head. No, Ravel, you're really smart. Blushing, Ravel grabs hold of Issei's arm and pulls him along. This way, right, Issei tilts his head as he gets pulled along. Um, yeah, Ravel Chan. The two walked like this for another block, that was until Ravel stopped in the middle of the abandoned street. Issei took a look around and then turned his attention back onto Ravel. Suddenly, the little blonde devil had an expression of sheer seriousness. Issei, something isn't right here. Issei nodded and took a look around at each of the homes that were within his sight, his new devil's sight. Even throughout the completely dark and shaded off areas around this evening housing block, Issei noticed a slight crimson color toward those same dark areas, which were now lit up by that same crimson effect. Neat, Issei thought. Ravel then made a sudden flinch and immediately pointed toward a specific home. This house was especially dark and also, there was something else. Issei focused on this two-story, gray stucco structure. Then the teen's nostrils flared. Blood. Ravel and Issei ran toward the building and stopped at the front door. Noises could be heard from the dark and unlit porch. I thought I told you to fix them. I haven't finished playing yet. Such a naughty little thing, disobeying orders. C-R-A-C-K. Eek. Wa. Please Lord Freed, haven't they suffered enough? The Lord would never. C-R-A-C-K. Issei looked back at Ravel and the two immediately nodded at one another. Looking at his arm, Issei yelled out what came to mind. Boosted gear. Boost. Ravel's eyes began to show golden stars once again, however the little Phoenix kept her head in the game and her mannerisms changed back to serious. Issei, now donning his red gauntlet, proceeded to pull at the door handle, which pulled through the heavy wooden door with ease. Oops. The team then kicked the door open. That was cool, Issei. Ravel nods. Issei nods back while grinning. I've always wanted to do something like that. Hee <laughs> hee. The team put on an equally serious expression. Okay. Let me go in first, stay behind me, okay. Slightly blushing, Ravel nodded her serious face. Walking into the dark hallway, the smell of blood intensified. Clearly, whatever was happening, was happening at the end of this corridor and into what looks to be the living room. Placing his gauntleted arm over his nose, Issei found the smell around him almost unbearable. Finally, the two slowly made it toward the living room and to their horror, mangled bodies of what used to be family members, were sprawled out all over the place in a chaotic fashion. Blood, entrails, guts, body parts, it was a scene straight out of a serial killer novel. Oh, Luki Luki, I spy with my little eye, something disgusting. Do you see this, little Asia? Devils. Oh yes, devils. A strange and white-haired man was sitting in the corner in an armchair. His eyes were red and his attire was similar to a priest's visage. Eek. Issei and Ravel looked down toward this strange man's feet. Laying on the ground, covered in blood was what looked to be a nun. Her arms and legs were mangled as the priest had one of his booted feet on top of her head. Please, help. The little nun could barely choke out those words before the white. Haired man proceeded to kick her in the stomach. Issei pushed Ravel behind him. Close your eyes. Close your eyes, do you understand me? Ravel, who was now crying, replied. Yes, 
and she did what she was told and held her eyes shut very tightly. The man with white hair stood from his chair and reached for what Issei thought was a pistol. I don't know who you are, but, boost. Boost Issei's crimson arm made a bright flash of green and red as the boy made a mad dash toward the priest. But I'm going to end you. High School PXD. A High School DXD fanfiction by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 12. Double Cliffhanger. Scene Unknown Home. Kuo. Nice try, little devil. Oh, now you're trying too hard, it's so precious. Missed again, you little shit. As this psychotic looking priest dodged each of Issei's attacks with ease, he looked over toward little Ravel, who was standing in the middle of the room with her eyes held shut. I know, maybe I'll give that cute one a few holes, Swiss cheese style, what do you say? It seemed as though this crazy man was not paying attention to Issei as his jaw felt a sudden sting to it. P-U-N-C-H. Issei watched as his gauntleted fist connected with the face of this white-haired menace, only to have the priest fly backwards and through a level of drywall. C-R-A-S-H. Taking a deep breath, Issei looked firstly at Ravel and then his gauntlet. Boost. Boost. Issei then looked at the large hole in the wall, waiting for this strange man to get back to his feet. Get your punk ass up, I ain't finished with you. Ravel heard Issei and slowly opened one eye. She immediately noticed the now unconscious nun which made her want to help. Seeing the girl suddenly cough, Ravel ran over and kneeled down next to her. Issei, I don't think she's going to make it. She has multiple gut wounds, not to mention her limbs. Ravel begins to sob softly as she takes hold of one of the nun's mangled hands. Issei grinds his teeth. Come on, get out here. Don't make me come in there. Still facing the large hole, Issei then speaks in a quiet voice. Ravel, please, if there is anything you can do, don't let her die. Ravel sighed sadly. Issei, we have a healing medicine called Phoenix Tears and I have a vial. But her injuries, they are too much, even for such a potion. Poor girl. Damn it, damn it, what kind of monster are you? Issei screamed as tears flew from his eyes. Oh no. Cough cough do you have a weakness for little blondes or something? The white-haired priest stepped out from the broken wall as he casually patted the dust from his clothes. Why? Boost. Issei grunted. Boost. Why? With his pistol still in one hand, the man casually shrugged. I suppose it's because she wasn't following my orders. The man then showed a very crazy grin as his tongue stuck out in an unnatural fashion. Maybe it's because I have a weakness for blondes too. Blondes that betrayed the church by using her powers to save a filthy devil. A weakness for making her. Ha 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 ha, holy. Remembering the state of the bleeding nun behind him, her body was riddled with punctures. Hearing this disgusting joke from the crazy man, Issei couldn't help but want to hurt him, badly. Boost. Boost. Issei felt incredible even though he was beyond angry. Taking the time to place his feet properly, the enraged teen made a single step forward while his fist was prepared for a strike. Instantly, as he was moving forward into his version of events, the room they were in seemed to blur as Issei's speed was incredible. The white-haired man seemed to crash back into his original hole as the sound of multiple walls being destroyed could be heard. Meanwhile, Issei stood next to the broken drywall with his fist raised. That felt good. Issei took a deep breath. Ravel screamed from behind. You, go after that freak, I'll figure something out, don't worry about it. Turning around to get a look at the little Phoenix princess, Issei watched as she was kneeling near a dying and blonde nun. Ravel had a very serious look on her face as she held the girl's hand. I won't let her die, Issei. Ravel nodded. Issei nodded back and rushed his way through the hole in the wall. Ravel looked back down at the dying girl as she showed a warm smile. Don't worry, the pain will stop soon and you'll be as good as new. Just give me one second. Using her free hand, the little devil reached above her head as a small fiery and orange portal appeared. Once manifested, Ravel continued to reach through the portal as she soon pulled back her hand while holding a small and golden colored box. The small fiery circle dissipated as Ravel opened the box which revealed a velvet and felt-like material on the inside. Looking back at the nun, Ravel's attention was drawn to the girl's hands. You have a sacred gear, don't you, hun? Ravel reached with her free hand and pulled a chess piece from the golden box. Magic huh, okay, well I think this should suffice. Ravel's warm smile remained as she placed a polished and orange-colored bishop piece on the girl's chest. 
The blonde nun coughs violently and Ravel doesn't risk wasting another moment as she releases the girl's hand. Okay, do your thing, evil piece. Live for me from now on, um. Ravel was trying to remember what that crazy guy called her. Um well, nun lady. No, wait, ahem, live for me, Asia Chan. Ravel holds out both of her hands over the blonde girl as orange and yellow energy seems to be emanating from both parties involved. Issei noticed a gold-colored light coming from behind him through the hole. Everything okay out there, Ravel Chan. As we pan out on a dusty Issei, we notice that he is holding onto the neck of an unconscious crazy priest. The once flawless face of the man was now that of hamburger as Issei slowly began to make his way out and back into the main room where this light was coming from. Oh, yeah, yay, it worked. Um, oh, Issei, yeah don't worry, I'm okay. Ravel's voice sounded overjoyed, pulling the priest's body through the hole after himself, Issei could see Ravel, still kneeling where she was however the nun, the nun, was sitting upward. Dropping the limp and unconscious white-haired man onto the hard floor, Issei ran over toward both girls while crouching down. Are you both okay? Ravel smiles brightly while holding onto both of Asia's shaking hands. I'm alright and so is my new bestie, Asia Chan. Asia looks around at both Issei and then Ravel as her green eyes wander back and forth. Um, hello, thank you for saving me. Issei couldn't help but notice how cute this nun was. Through her hood, the girl had long and flowing golden hair. Her skin was pale and her figure was delightfully petite. Hearing the man on the floor, making a groaning sound, Issei turned his attention back onto the freak of a person while showing a scowl. What's up with this guy? Miss Asia, were you and him working together? Asia takes a large and dry gulp before slowly nodding. Ravel looks back at the priest. He looks to be an exorcist. That gun of his looked like it was from the church, he's probably got other weapons on his person. Issei replies as he begins to frisk the priest. Exorcist, how's that? Asia interrupts. Erm, Freed and I are both outcasts of the church. Freed, Ravel shows an intrigued expression. Freed Selzin, Asia frowns. Selzin, Selzin, hum, that last name sounds familiar. Oh, wait, your name is Asia and you said you were also an outcast. Hum, Asia, is your last name Argento? Ravel's blue eyes began to widen. Asia, nodded, I am Asia Argento. Oh, wow, score. Ravel was now swaying Asia's arms along with her own in excitement. I've heard about you, so, that's why your sacred gear seemed familiar. You've got twilight healing. Issei scratched the back of his head while smiling nervously as Asia had a confused and confounding blush. Yes, I can heal people. Asia's blush intensified. Issei tilted his head while noticing that Asia's mortal wounds looked to be less mortal. Yes, she was still in bad shape, but she looked to be in a stabilized condition. Ravel Chan, I thought you said those phoenix tears wouldn't work on her, so how? Issei looked back at Asia and then at Ravel again. Ravel stood up and showed a warm smile. Issei, Asia Argento is now my first bishop. I turned her into a devil. Asia's eyes suddenly increased in size by two times. What? Issei gained a frown. Oh, was there nothing else that could be done? I'm a devil, and to think that I thought the Lord hath forsaken me when I was merely an outcast, but a devil. No, Asia attempted to stand up but her wounds made her fall back to the floor, however, to her surprise, the boy named Issei was holding her up in a bridal style. I'm scared. Asia turned her head into Issei's chest and proceeded to make a muffled scream. Issei looks back at Ravel, who now has a very worried frown. You did the right thing, Ravel Chan. I'm proud of you saving her life as you did. You're a good person. Ravel nods however her frown remains. I didn't have time to tell her, I'm sorry. Issei looks down at the crying Asia. Hey, Asia Chan is it. Look, it's going to be okay. I'm a devil too and you know what. Asia looks back up at a now smiling Issei. What? Sniff sniff. Turns out that devils are just like people, you've got good ones and you've got bad ones. So far, the only bad things I've met are angels and priests, but I'm sure there are good ones too. I can vouch for Ravel Chan over here. She's one of the really good ones. Issei nodded while maintaining his smile. Asia looked over Issei's shoulder and at Ravel. You're a good devil. Ravel's frown turned upside down as her smile was very contagious. Asia Chan, nobody is ever going to hurt you again. My peerage is going to adore you. Asia blushes. Okay. 
please take care of me. Issei nods. Alright, now that that's out of the way, what are we gonna do with your, freed, buddy over here? Ravel shrugs. Well, I would say that we could let mother handle him, but. Issei makes a worried frown. Spankings. Ravel nods. For everyone involved. Issei thinks hard. Well, I could have the president take care of this bastard. She'd know what to do. Ravel shakes her head rapidly. No, Sona Citri would take you from me. Out of the question. Before another word could be uttered, the sounds of multiple footsteps could be heard, approaching from the home entrance. Ravel runs up to Issei and hugs his torso while the teen is still holding Asia. Eek, did you hear that? Issei quietly nods. Yeah, but I think it's... Issei. A very familiar voice spoke out as the approaching people could now be seen. None other than Sona Sitri, Tsubaki Shinra, Rias Gramori, Akino Himahima and Kaniko Tuju were standing in the hallway. Then a crashing sound could be heard from behind Issei. Crash. Walking through yet another large hole, this time coming from the back side of the home, Tsubasa Yura came marching forward while brushing her fists off of drywall material. Turning his attention back onto a now confused looking Sona, Issei glanced at both Ravel and then the girl in his arms, Asia. Um, President, I can explain. Scene Phoenix Mansion. Walking down one of the large and golden embroidered hallways was Riser Phoenix. She was wearing a maroon color. Nighty while carrying a large and comfy pillow in her arms. Having a small frown on her face, Riser looked to be in some kind of personal dilemma. Riser doesn't need to explain anything. All I need to do is demand that I be allowed in and before he has a chance to say anything else, I'll just, well, I'll just, a blush forms on the golden-haired woman's cheeks. I'll take him, simple. Almost walking past the door she was headed for, Riser took a moment and a deep breath before proceeding to knock softly. Placing a hand near her mouth, Riser blew some air so that she could smell her own breath. Satisfied that there was nothing offensive, the woman continued to wait. Not getting any response, Riser knocked again, this time a bit more loudly. Hiyoto, pissed, I'm coming in then. Riser slowly turned the door handle and peeked inside. That's the end of the part 3 remember you can read the fanfiction on the website if you want to know the next part this video was chapter 9 to 12 so the next part is chapter 13.